recognize that the issue of affordable housing is complex. There's a lot of different uh, influencers. Uh, there's a lot of different influences. There's a lot of different uh, paths we can take. And ultimately, we know that we can't solve it tonight here in this room with all you great people. And ultimately, because of the way the forum is set up, we won't be able to hear from everyone. So that's why what we're uh, encouraging people to do is if you haven't had a chance, take a post-it note or take a pen and paper. And you'll notice around the room we have some uh, questions post it up and there's already been a lot of responses already. If you haven't gotten a chance to do so, please um, write down what your thoughts are those questions, what your opinion is, and, or even if you have other questions that you didn't get a chance to ask, feel free to write down those questions and let us know. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take all this feedback back to our table, we're going to discuss it, we're going to use it as a launching pad for the next step and then the next step forward. So it's really important that, and we want to hear from everyone. Additionally, uh, if there is enough time permitting, I don't know if there will be, but we're hoping we might have some quick uh, breakouts in the group sessions. We have a set of questions we want uh, the groups to discuss and talk about, and then we can come back to the room and have a brief little discussion about it. If there isn't enough time, what we will do is we'll email you the uh, questions, uh, this little questionnaire, and uh, we can get some of your feedback via email after the meeting. Students come up to us to seek support financially, on support, on trying to find homes. It, it is so devastating that beyond what we have to deal with as a student studying, beyond what we have to deal with tuition or OSAP, even food is a problem for us as students that we can't even find a home for ourselves. So we first have to start off and what is really the purpose or why we're even doing what we're doing? And it's and for student housing in particular, it's, we want to advocate to make sure that students have security in home, that they have a roof over the head while they're studying. So to give an overview on what students really struggle with is finance. Students oftentimes have to pay $4,000 if you're a diploma. If you're an international student, you're paying $14,000 just for the diploma program. I know we don't focus too much on international students because they're not a native person of our country, but they still struggle so much with housings and they're still with students as well. And I'm sorry that I'm reading off of my phone, but I have a bunch of things that I want to really make sure that I point out on. Um, so the first off is, we find that there's a lack, a lack of housing on, around our area. We have, we, there's a reason on why we move so closely to our, our school, our campus, is because we need to live closer to our area in order to increase our ability for education. If we're closer to our campus, then we're able to really be attentive to classes and so on. But there's a lack of housing in our area, in Etobicoke South and North for Humber College in particular. And I'm not speaking of just Humber College in general, but other campuses or other um, institutions are struggling with this as well. So students all around. When we're looking at students, when we're looking for housing, the problem is, is that one, there's so many different kinds of sites out there that we can't seem to find one credible source to really help support us. There's Craigslist, there's Kijiji, so there's places for students. We don't know which one to choose. We go to all of them. And when we do go to all of them, the, what is the most frustrating part is there's such high criteria. You have to be vegan. You have to be, you have, you have to be a certain race. Only females, only male, males. How are we supposed to really find a house if there's so many th of these criteria? We don't fit into all of them. And even do, though we find the right one that fits for us with the criteria, they end up rejecting us. So now we're a student that we're actually living in a home right now. The struggles that we live at in the home ourselves is sometimes our rights are abused as tenants. Because we're young people, because we're students, we're easily being able to, our rights are abused. My, myself as a student at housing, I was, I experienced racism. I was kicked out early. People, like my room was destroyed. This man really, I don't know why he did it, but he did it. And that's, that's something I shouldn't be stressing about as a student. And I'm not the only one that has struggled with that. Um, I think something else, sorry, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about it that I'm losing track, but <laughs> what, the last thing I want to talk about is the condition of homes. It, I've seen some pictures of where students are living right now, and it's like living in a dungeon. They live in a basement where the ceilings are falling off, where the, there's mold everywhere. But because it's so cheap for students, they, they just live by it. They live there for the whole entire year, because it's cheap and they need a place to stay. And, and I think that's so devastating and we shouldn't bring, let our students to go through that. So if I have anything to leave with you today, students are also a big part of this conversation when it comes to housing in the GTA area. One, we can't afford it, 
We're already struggling with food too. We can't struggle with home. We can't struggle with tuition. The conditions that we're living in, we're getting abused by our rights. Sometimes it's hard to find places. It, and it's not a stress that we should be experiencing as students. Last year we had a, a Lake Shore Leaders Forum, which was uh, basically done to get uh, 40 leaders together, Lake Shore Leaders together, to identify principles, issues, and prioritize solutions for the Lake Shore area. And one of the principles that was, one of the needs that was expressed was for affordable housing. And we, we did a report on it, and uh, in the report it was uh, of the meeting, the, the community needs different types of housing which accommodate renters of different income levels. Affordable housing in particular is required and should be promoted, pro maintained, and prioritized. And in our report, they had uh, the statement that came out is the rental stock in South Etobicoke is aging and needs to be maintained. Wages have not kept up with the house cost of housing and higher percentages of income are being dedicated to shelter costs. Young people are facing hard times as precarious work, unemployment, and underemployment are making it difficult for people to afford housing. So some so recommendations that came out of this is to reintroduce the co-op housing program as offered by CMHC in the early 80s. So some people are just are renters and some are homeowners and some of these homeowners are two uh, prime rate increases from being on the street, maybe not able to afford their home. And this is this this CMHC housing program helps to keep interest uh, loans at a low rate. And another recommendation was to allow for affordable housing residential units in old proposed developments. And if you look around, Lakeshore area is getting a lot of development offers, and none of them have have any portion for affordable housing. Well, we need to develop a national housing program. Now, just last week, the Liberals brought one out, which a lot of you probably have heard about. It's quite interesting, and I suppose the other parties will get something in too. And the other recommendation was allocate more government-owned lands to affordable housing. And the more, more, uh, more, more affordable housing we have, that will help keep the rents down. We worked with uh, other community advocacy groups to rezone the Amadea Court, now called Mendoco Estates, complex of 70, or 370 affordable units so that building heights were restricted. Originally, the plan called for several 25 to 40 story buildings, um, which would have just decimated the, the affordable housing. Uh, so what happened was the building height, the heights were restricted. And the rezoning of that site is not site specific, so this actually is throughout Mimico. They, they can, their heights are limited. Uh, we're also a voice for the community and we try to foster community engagement. We do this several ways. We try building a sense of community by getting people out and meeting their neighbors. And things like our AGM, our community barbecues, and day walk is, are really big things to get people out. We also uh, try to educate residents by holding tenants' rights workshop. Um, which, by the way, there's one next week on 27th at Storefront Humber, and uh, but <coughs> tenants and landlord rights is that one, so that tenants know what the landlords can do and what they can't do. We also have information. We've had information sessions put on by other community groups about thing topics like TTC service, which in this neighborhood is, is you know, it's invaluable. And we put out our, uh, our sheets of information at other events. So the other initiative that we're very proud of is our Get Out the Vote initiative in 2014, when, in which there was both a provincial and a municipal election, which is what we're facing now. Uh, we did not only hold our settings in traditional, or our sessions in traditional settings, such as meeting rooms, we took outreach on the road. We had our cart of democracy, which consisted of an awning, tables, chairs, information pamphlets, and fact sheets about voting and the process and how important it is to vote. And we packed all of it into a shopping buggy. Well, except for the awnings, tables, and chairs. 
<laughs> and we popped up at uh, different events and on sidewalks. And we really feel we made a difference in a voter turnout, both provincially and uh, municipally, because the turnout on both of them, and particularly in our area, did go up. So that's what we do, and um, we're inter interested in talking to anybody who's interested in us. So thank you.